If you love street photography and you love small compact lenses which will fit your Leica cameras, definitely stay tuned as this lens is going to be for you. Today we are looking at the Voigtlander Snapshot Scope R 25mm f4 LTM lens. This is a lens where Leica could really learn a thing or two when it comes to a zone focus or scale focusing lens because it's far better designed than the Leica lenses that I use. Let's jump into the video and I'll explain a bit better. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. So today we're going to do another video on street photography. I know normally I shoot portraits and weddings but after my recent poll where 26% of you said that you prefer street photography, I thought I should give it a go. And the lens we're looking at today is an obvious choice if you are a street photographer and a Leica shooter. I'll quickly give you details about the lens and then we'll jump straight into lots of sample photos. So this lens was released in 1999 and it is a Leica Screwmat lens or LTM lens. That means if you want to use it on your M camera, you'll need to use one of the little washer LTM to M adapters. For the lens geeks amongst us, this lens is seven elements in five groups and 10 aperture blades, all metal and glass, non-range finder cupboard lens. So this is where it gets a bit different. The snapshot scope R was designed as the name suggests for snapshot photography. And so this is where I think the Leica lenses would benefit if they had the same design. If you love zone focusing, wouldn't it be amazing if you could feel like a click with your fingers without looking at the lens, telling you if you're say at one meter, one and a half meters or three meters by going click, click, click. And if you set the lens to f8 and then the distance to 3 meters, everything from 1.5 meters to infinity is in focus. So the Voigtlander Snapshot Scope R has a click stop distance scale, but on all the normal Leica lenses, there's no click telling you whether you're at 0.7 meters, 1 meter, 5 meters, infinity. And so you have to get used to where the focus tab is on, on the Leica lenses. So the Leica Elmrit M28 2.8, great lens, but it'd really benefit if they put a, a click stop distance feel in so you can shoot even more without even looking. As the name suggests, this has a maximum aperture of f4 and it has half stop aperture clicks and has a close focus distance of 0.7 meters. Now, if you love light lenses, this lens is absolutely for you. This lens weighs in at 90 grams, which is around 3.17 ounces. The lens that you can carry everywhere, this is one of those lenses. The lens has a focus stick design, the same as the 21mm color scope R and the 35mm color scope R. These three lenses do look very similar. Here you can see them side by side. The 21 f4 color scope R LTM. Then in the middle of the black one, the 25mm f4 snapshot scope R, which is non range finder coupled. The color scope R is R range finder coupled. And then on the end, the 35mm f 2.5 color scope R LTM. So these are super duper pocket lenses for screw mount cameras. But as I say, with an adapter, you can use it on your M mount camera as well. Talking of cameras and what cameras it may be suited to. If you love using cameras like the cheap and plastic Voigtlander Bessa L camera, this lens is great for that camera because that camera has no range finder. You just need a 25 mm viewfinder, as you can see on the top here made by either Voigtlander or you can get them from like the cheap Chinese brands as well. And Leica, well Leica make a 24mm so you can kind of approximate. So the Voigtlander Bessa L with the 25mm snapshot scope R will probably give you one of the lightest near point and shoot camera setups you can get. And the Bessa L has a built in light meter. If you prefer something better built, you could use a like a Barnack camera, also small and lightweight. And then either use the 28mm finder and guesstimate, or as I say, fit a 28mm finder. If you use M mount cameras, you could get something like the uh, Leica M4P. And then if you use the entire viewfinder area on the M4P or any M camera with a 28mm frame line, you can approximate roughly 25mm to use the 25mm scope R. What about the characteristics of this lens? This lens will give a vintage camera a more modern, higher performance look. This is a high contrast lens with great sharpness, especially stopped down to around f8. It does vignette more so on digital, I think, than film. And that again reduces when you get to roughly f8-ish. There's little distortion and the sharpness is good across the field. You don't have a drop off in the corners like you would on many vintage lenses. On full frame digital cameras, it's not quite as perfect. You will get the magenta kind of cast on the left and the right of the photos if you use it on an M240. And there's a very, very, very slight cast on the like SL, but that's barely noticeable. So on the SL, it seems to perform better. 
than the M in terms of the colors, but if you're shooting black and white, you could of course use either. If however, you want a small camera with a small lens, you may want to do what I did and use a lens on a crop sensor like a CL camera or any other crop sensor camera. That means you've got no vignetting or color issues at the edges, and then you can just enjoy it for what it is in the center. With a 1.5 crop factor, this would give me around 37 mil equivalent focal length. And so this is going to be my 35 mil ish street setup for the photos that I'm about to show you. Let's jump into the photos and see how I got on. Okay, day one in London was me hosting fellow lucky photographer Jose from San Francisco. Once I'd finished the workshop, I had a chance to play around with the lens on my way home. And I'm not quite sure what happened at that tube shop, but I quite liked it. And this was me trying to shoot from the hip. Uh, limited success. <laughs> I need some more practice. Uh, I didn't include all the bad shots. These are just a few that were reasonably in focus and were okay. Okay, day two, slightly different. I had a free day. So for those of you that are part of my Leica club, link below, make sure you sign up if you've got a Leica camera. It's totally free. And I also have a mailing list for workshops and photo walks. Again, join up to that if you've got any interest. I sent an email last minute saying anyone free in London for a photo walk. Ken was in town, so we met up, had a coffee, then went to Canada Water in Canary Wharf. Kind of spent about an hour together chatting, went our separate ways, and then this is me in Canada Water now, doing some shots with this lens. So I was kind of obsessed with this guy in the light on the left-hand side, and so I kept trying to do like walk past, trying to get the shot. Uh, I think eventually Cotton Nani seemed to be spotting me, even though I was pretending to take photos forwards, but... The light in that place is just amazing. I'm definitely going to go back. Um, it's like New York for me in terms of these little pockets of light everywhere on a sunny day. And it was just amazing. Uh, from there, I kind of walked a bit further along the water and just taking photos of anything that caught my eye. I was testing both this lens and another lens, which you'll see a small clip of after these photos. The light was pretty good. And despite the rain that we'd had earlier in the day, it cleared up quite nicely. Uh, because this lens flares a little bit, I was kind of a bit obsessed again with the light kind of flowing through this hole at the top of the stairs into the station. So I shot quite a few frames there on both film and digital. And then this is upstairs, basically going up those stairs to the uh, platform above. And again, I, I really, really love lines and geometry and shapes and, and all that sort of thing. So I, I was probably there for 20 minutes taking pictures of trains going past on film and digital. Um, definitely in my element with this kind of thing. I just if it's, if I don't photo models, this is my my next favourite thing. If there's strong directional light, as you can see here. Next, I love also the game of composition. So I've tried to compose within the limitations of the 35-ish equivalent focal length that I was working with, with it being 25 mil plus the crop factor. And then I was trying to time the people walking across the bridge, as you can see, kind of in front of me, and try and get an angle so there's some separation between them and the background. Um, as I walked back to the bit near where I started, the light had come round, and again, I was just like, oh, the light's amazing. And so I was kind of hanging around trying to get people walking through that pocket of light. Then I walked a bit further and I just loved the, the just everything's just amazing. <laughs> I was just, I was just really happy. And the plane flew over and because of this lens is so fast to focus, quickly put, put your camera up in the air and I managed to get the shot. And then, yeah, just trying to find different angles, different places to take shots i like the lights here with this tunnel so shot that on film and digital okay day three this was another workshop in dalston area and i saw this car through a fence on the way to the workshop it was actually me assisting you can see a quick clip there with um, lawrence with his hasselblad so i assisted for lights and cameras on that workshop then afterwards about five o'clock i came out to get my train home and the light again was fantastic and so i don't miss i don't really know this area at all so when things are new it's all exciting isn't it so the low sunlight just made everything look fantastic so i was taking pictures as, as i kind of walked back towards liverpool street where I, where i got my tube from so yeah i'm definitely going to come back here again i've got another workshop here in i think a week or so uh just really cool light and busy if you do if you go kind of here at rush hour there's so much happening there's lots of things to take photographs of uh, if you saw my last video uh the last one i posted not to look street photography if you've not seen it check it out and you'll see that photo that I just showed in that video as well. Uh, again, I think I get drawn to portraits and people in posters, even if they're not real people. Okay, so these are the photos. Did you enjoy them? What's the verdict? Do I like this lens? Yes, I would really, really recommend this lens, especially for street shooters. 
both film and digital, probably especially film and especially crop sensor camera users or black and white users if you're using it on full frame. If you want something small and light, this is amazing and the price is very competitive too. You can pick up these lenses for around £250 to £300 plus on eBay and you can get them in both black and silver. If you prefer a rangefinder coupled lens for your rangefinder cameras, you might want to get the later lens. There was a Voigtlander Colorscope R 25mm M lens also released at a later date. That is rangefinder coupled and pretty much all color scope R lenses are also range for a couple and they all give you the same nice small compact setup. As always a massive thanks to my awesome patrons and if you want to see more color scope R lens reviews watch my playlist next.